Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott, and you, my dear friends, I've wandered into the Prague Corner, where today on the channel, I've got my very first guest star. Yeah, I'm co-hosted here today by Penelope Peep. Easter's right around the corner. It's a great time to start thinking about your life and about how you've been living it and what's going to be happening afterwards. None of us are getting any younger. You know, this is kind of boomer central here in the Prague Corner. So we start thinking about our mortality and depending on what religious persuasion that you might subscribe to, you might have some different feelings about that kind of stuff. But I did a video a couple of weeks ago entitled How Prague Ruined My Life life and a lot of you freaks thought that there was a part two coming or you thought there'd be some kind of happy ending uh i kind of left it real dark and uh, miserable but that's disingenuous you, you guys watch my videos you know i'm not that guy so i figured i'd do the part two how prog saved my life and yeah we're gonna be talking about uh what happened to get me to this point in my life, and I know this is uh, <laughs> this, this is obviously very self-centered kind of stuff, but I don't care. I, I just feel like talking today, unlike yesterday. But uh, yeah, Prague most certainly ruined my life as a little kid. It set me up for failure. There's no doubt about that. Um, the '80s came along. You know, I was a big prog guy in the 70s, but all my bands either broke up or started to go pop. So I started looking around at other types of music and uh, I fell in love with a few bands. Uh, XTC was a huge influence for me, but I also got really into punk. Um, the, 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 the prog in the 80s wasn't my prog. I like Marillion, I like IQ, I like all those bands, uh, but that wasn't my prog. Uh, I, I learned to get a greater appreciation for all those uh, neo-prog bands later, but my focus was on new wave and punk, and uh, the 80s were a time when uh, I was getting really involved in uh, this band I was in called Disorderly Conduct. We put out one album back in 86, and uh, yeah, yeah, it didn't sell at all, but it, you know, we were kind of a metal punk kind of thing, and uh, we were getting a little bit of interest from labels. Uh, we were based out of Florida, and they wanted us to move out to LA, which was certainly nothing I was interested in doing, uh, so they actually went forward. They changed their name to Amen. Uh, they put out three albums, uh, the first one on Virgin, the second one on Roadrunner, and their third album on System of a Downs, a Columbia imprint. So I think I was a little salty about missing out on that. Uh, my whole life I've been risk averse, so I didn't you know, know how I was even going to eat out there. Uh, pay to play was the big thing going on uh, all through the 80s and early 90s, so it wasn't something I wanted to get involved in. Um, but in fact... I became so upset with the music business. I was managing record stores in Florida uh, that I, when I turned 25, I cut my hair, I quit my job at the record store, uh, I sold all my musical equipment, and I went to work for Foot Locker selling shoes. That's what I did in the 90s. Uh, you know, so I was completely out of it, but the whole thing where prog rock ruined me was there. I had my brain wasn't thinking right all through the 90s, working 80, 90, 100 hour work weeks. Uh, it was just ridiculous. Um, I became so fed up with it that I started making all kinds of bad decisions. Uh, my first marriage broke up. And like I told you freaks on my uh, last uh, autobiographical uh, episode, I did in fact uh, do 18 months for my misdeeds. Uh, you know, whatever. But, uh, when I came out, you know, you got a lot of time to think when you're locked up, right? I mean, all I thought about was where I went wrong in my life, how prog rock ruined my life, how music in general ruined my life, but I was wrong. I was dead wrong. Actually, 
my lack of pursuit of music is what ruined my life. I should have gone out to LA. I should have pursued my musical dreams, but I didn't think I was good enough. Um, I didn't think that uh, anybody wanted anything to do with anything I was up to, so I just played it safe, and that's kind of been the story of my life, uh, right? You know, you just don't want to take those chances, don't want to take those risks. So anyway, when I'm locked up, I'm thinking all kinds of stuff. I'm thinking about what I want to do. Uh, I get out of jail. I got 30 bucks in my pocket, 30 bucks in my pocket. I go to a, a thrift store, and I find this beat-up old guitar, and um, my cousin's husband... Uh, had a little bit of money and he wanted to start a band. Unfortunately, the guy really couldn't play. <laughs> so the idea of uh, doing prog was out the window. So I formed a wedge piece with Mark Marinelli. And this is our first CD. <laughs> Absolute Bliss. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. He couldn't play, like I said, so my songwriting was dumbed down. Uh, we got a little bit of notice, but uh, about that same time, I'm on MySpace. I'm promoting the band like crazy on MySpace, and I meet a girl from Ohio. And, uh, yeah, so we start talking on MySpace, and then I come to visit her in Ohio. She came down to Florida to visit me. Back and forth, this went for a couple of years. So I moved to Ohio in 2009, and at that point, I figured my music career was done again for the second time. Um, at that point, I started writing uh, for The Fire Note, and... Uh, Originally, I'm writing about the indie and the alternative and the punk and all that kind of stuff, which is their main focus. But everybody, uh, the whole staff at the Fire Note, they're music nerds. They love prog. So they didn't mind if I did some prog stuff on the side. Eventually, it turned into kind of a big thing where the prog content was becoming uh, one of the main drivers of traffic to the Fire Note. So we started the Prog Corner. My editor actually came up with the name. It's a fantastic name. Uh, just focus on prog rock. And let me tell you something. Ever since, I've been doing nothing but prog rock. Uh, my spirits have been lifted. I found a new reason to get up in the morning. Um, I've got an audience now that I can ramble on about crap like this. And you people will actually watch it and react. And, uh, you know, that's uh, absolutely critical to me. Thank God my wife is okay with me spending all this time uh, doing this stuff. It's kind of ridiculous. But honestly, the reason that prog rock has saved my life is you guys, without a doubt. If it weren't for you guys, I'd probably want to put a gun to my head or something ridiculous like that. No, I'm, I'm not a suicidal type of guy. But the prog rock has certainly focused my mind again, where I actually have a little bit of a, a creative outlet to, to talk about music that I love. Um, you know, I told you guys I didn't really care for that second wave, the third wave of prog. I, I've been hearing Flower Kings and Spock's Beard, but it really didn't hit me until I heard this. This hit me hard, like a ton of bricks, 2001, Transatlantic, uh, Sympty. Uh, from here, I was able to go back and check out Spock's Beard and Marillion and the Flower Kings and Dream Theater. This was my gateway to modern Prague. I got this uh, right before I got locked up. Um, so I was thinking about Prague a lot when I was in jail. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not good enough to play Prague. But, you know, like I said, uh, down the road, the Prague Corner was born and I was able to uh, do what I really want to do, which is hang out with you guys and talk about Prague Rock. You know, that's, that's all it's about. Uh, here we are. 
I'm at 924 subscribers. The channel's only been going for three and a half months, and it's all because of you guys. I know there's a whole group of people out there that feel the same way I do, that prog rock needs all the love and all the attention that it deserves. Uh, we need to fight for it. We need to do everything we can to make sure that people don't forget about our genre. Uh, yeah, I'm going to fight the good fight until I can't breathe anymore. That is the reason that prog rock saved my life. Um, I am a blessed, blessed person. And it's because of you guys. It's because of my wife. You know, I am nothing without that support and without that love. And I understand that. And this is that time of year where you really should start reflecting on things a little bit. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or not. Penelope Peep doesn't care. Uh, just remember that Jesus loves you. And so do I. You guys are the best. Have a great day. And I will see you freaks on the flip side. <sighs>